tutorial. This is lesson four. In lesson three, I uh, introduced you to the master formula, which we're going to use for all of our dr drug calculations. And I promised in lesson four we would start actually doing some drug calculations. So here's our first example. You're ordered to administer a very common drug, uh, cartizen, 0.25 milligrams per kilogram, slow IV push. You always want to give that medication very slowly. And you're going to give it to a patient that is in rapid atrial fibrillation. That's a very common indication. You have a patent IV line, and you have a vial of cartizen that is 25 milligrams in that 5 cc vial, or 5 milliliter vial. So this gives us a lot of information. This gives us our desired dose of 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. That's a common starting dose for cartizen. And a concentration of 25 milligrams in 5 milliliters. Okay, so with that desired dose, we know which components of the master formula we're going to need. We're for sure going to need the desired dose component. You always need that. We're going to need the concentration. And since this is 20.25 milligrams per kilogram, we're going to need the patient's weight. Okay, so our patient, let's say, is 176 pounds. Let's quickly convert that into kilograms. 176 divided by 2 is 88. The first number in 88 is, of course, 8, so we subtract 8 from that, and we get an answer of 80 kilograms. Remember that doing this method is, uh, could be off by 1 kilogram, but again, that's not super important. Uh, you may be starting with a guesstimation of the patient's weight in the first place. Let's say they're unresponsive, or if they do tell you their weight, they might not be completely honest, and they might not know their exact weight anyhow. So being off by 1 kilogram is really not going to affect your average adult patient. Now, if you're working with a pediatric, you can uh, make use of something like a Braslo tape or something that can give you a much more accurate dosage for that patient's size. So, we are going to plug those numbers into the master formula. Since this is a weight-based dose, we're going to need the patient's weight, the desired dose, and the concentration. But since it doesn't say per minute over here, it does not say that, we don't need the solution set, and we certainly don't need time. Okay, so we have not used those components. Everything else has been plugged into the master formula. The first thing we're going to have to do is reduce the concentration to 1 ml. And all I mean by that is you go down here to the concentration. That's all you're paying attention to right now. And whatever your number is on the right side, in this case it's 5, you're going to have to divide both sides by. So you would do 5 divided by 5 over here on the right, and then 25 divided by 5 over there on the left. So if you did that, 25 divided by 5 is 5 milligrams, and of course 5 divided by 5 would give you 1 milliliter. Now we can work the math with our reduced concentration of 5 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, um, now we can just go ahead and cross out our doubles. We have milligram on top, milligram on the bottom, and kilogram over here, kilogram over here, we're left with milliliters. That's what your answer is going to be in. And that is the purpose of doing this drug math. When you go and you grab that cartisan vial, you're going to be using a syringe to take the medication out of that vial. If you look at a syringe, it's measured in milliliters or cc's. You need to figure out how many milliliters you want to draw out of that vial to administer this desired dose of 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. That's the only way you're going to be able to do this, so that's why we have to do this math. So we've crossed out all the doubles, we've figured out our solution is going to be in milliliters, so we can leave that there. And now we can uh, reduce this a little bit, we can divide the top and the, the 80 by 5, both of 5 will go into 80 equally. And you're left with 0.25 times 16, because 80 divided by 5 is 16. All right, so 0.25 times 16 might sound like difficult math because people don't like seeing decimals, but it's just like saying a fourth of 16. So one fourth times 16, we can make that a fraction. And then all you would do is simplify this. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4. It's also the same as saying uh, 0.25 times 16 is the same as saying 16 divided by 4. Your answer would be 4, and of course it's in milliliters. So you would administer 4 milliliters of cartism from that vial of 25 milligrams and 5 mLs to give 0.25 milligrams per kilogram to an 80 kilogram patient. Alright, let's do another one. This one's a little bit more difficult. You're now ordered to administer Diprovan, okay, and that's going to be your post 
a rapid sequence induction medication to keep a patient sedated, 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. That's our desired dose right there. You have a 132 pound patient and a 50 cc bottle of Dipervan with 500 milligrams of Dipervan inside of it. And you're gonna use a mini drip set. That's a 60 drop set. So we've got a whole lot of information there. Our desired dose is 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Our solution set is 60 drops per milliliter. Our concentration is 500 milligrams and 50 milliliters. And our patient weight is 132 pounds. Of course, we have to convert that to kilograms. 132 divided by 2 is 66. The first number is 6, so we subtract that and we get 60 kilograms. Again, remember that's a very, very close estimate. Okay, now we can plug everything in to the master formula. I'm going to try to color code this. Our desired dose went right here. The solution set is over here where it belongs. The concentration came down to the bottom where it goes. And the patient's weight is right up there. And if you look right over here, you'll see that that all kind of correlates to that. You'll be wondering why we're not using the time component. That's because this desired dose here is per minute. So if I were to use a time component, I would just be saying times one. And you don't really need to put that there. You know that that's kind of just going to cancel out anyhow. So the first thing we have to do is something new. We haven't had to do this yet. But it's important that our concentration and our desired dose both match in the type of measurement that they are. So since the top is in micrograms, we have to change the bottom from milligrams to micrograms as well. So if you remember uh, from one of the previous lessons that every milligram is basically 1,000 micrograms. So we would just take that 500 milligrams and add three zeros to it. We move the decimal point over three spots, okay? And we get 500,000 micrograms. We can re now reduce our concentration to one ml by dividing by the number from the right, which is 50, on both sides. You have to divide 50 on the right, 50 on the left. And you end up with 10,000 micrograms per milliliter. It's a whole lot of micrograms. All right, so now we can continue on with some stuff we know. Cross out all the doubles. Get rid of micrograms on top, micrograms on the bottom. You have kilograms over here, kilograms over here. And you have milliliters here and milliliters up here. You're left with drops per minute. Okay, so we've kind of gotten rid of everything and rewrote it. You're left with 10 times 60 times 60 drops over 10,000 minutes. Now we can just cross out a whole bunch of zeros. We have three zeros on the bottom that we can correlate with three zeros on top. So we can cross those out to simplify this. Now we're left with one times six times six over 10, and we just kind of put that drops per minute off to the side. All right, we have pretty simple math. One times six times six is 36 over 10. 36 over 10 is 36 divided by 10, which is 3.6. You go ahead and round that, and you're going to end up with about four drops per minute. And that's pretty easy. I mean, it's as difficult as it's going to get as far as the uh, master formula goes. And that's the end of lesson four. I'll see you back in lesson five, where we'll do some more examples.